Warning, this video features full spoilers for the trial released in patch 6.3 of Final Fantasy XIV. Hi guys, and welcome to a Hector Lecture Guide to the Fight Mount Ordeals Extreme. This is Rubicante. The only prepositions that you need to agree before the fight are clock positions. I prefer these ones, but in general you should have tanks and healers alternating with the DPS. And you need light parties. The fight begins with the boss casting a raid-wide Inferno. You can pre-shield this before the fight begins, and make sure to mitigate. The boss will then turn east, and with a wave of his fiery arm, transform the stage background. This begins a mechanic we're going to see frequently throughout the fight, Ordeal of Purgation. The way Ordeal of Purgation works is you're always going to get three circles, red, purple, red, some white lines, and then these symbols around the outside. The blue triangle symbols you should recognize from normal mode are just going to be a conal cleave. The red ones are new. If a red one gets a fireball at the end and explodes, the entire half of the circle in front of that one is going to be unsafe. The first ordeal of purgation is going to always feature both of the red circles rotating. Now, the middle one is as simple as looking at the white line and rotating it one position in the direction the arrows are pointing. The outside one's a little bit trickier. You might notice that all the white lines are exactly the same, so what's rotating? It's instead the symbols themselves. They're going to rotate one position in the direction the arrows are pointing. Once you've worked out where both are going, see if the fireball is going towards a blue cone, and if so, you need to make sure you move to the side of that. When the rotation happens and the fireball hits, as long as you're to the side, you're safe. Keep in mind that just like in normal mode, you get stunned well before the fireball starts moving, so you need to get to your position early. If instead, Ordeal of Purgation had led to this set of symbols being the case, when the fireball finally hits where it's going, you're going to get a half-circle cleave. As a result, if you know that it's going to end up at a red, you go opposite where it's going to end up. Anywhere on that half of the arena will be safe. However you deal with the first one, the second Ordeal of Purgation will follow, and this one is by far the simplest. This is always the exact same pattern. You can more or less ignore everything that's going on. The arrows don't matter. All you need to focus on is the white lines in the middle. They form a V shape. Go directly opposite that. Once all said and done, those two lines are going to lead to two red half circle cleaves. And as long as you've gone opposite the V, you are perfectly safe. From here, everybody can go into their light party groups, except for the main tank who's going to take a tank buster. This cleaves and hits lightly, so mitigate it and make sure you're not stood on top of anybody squishy. Afterwards, your main tank can join the group, ready for Arch Inferno. Just like in normal mode, the middle of the arena is going to be unsafe, and you're going to get a circular pattern of big AoEs that are on the ground and well telegraphed. These AoEs are either going to start at 1-3, or at 2-4. As long as you've pre-positioned east and west, or north and south, whatever your group likes, just rotate clockwise to the front of where these circles are rotating, so you've got room to move. While these circles start to rotate and explode, you're going to get a combination of mechanics. You will always get two mechanics, and there are three possible mechanics total from which the game picks from. Which mechanics you get, and the order you get them in, is totally random. One mechanic, probably the easiest, is light party stacks. As long as you're in groups of four, as you should be before the mechanic starts, this is resolved just by being all grouped together. The second mechanic you could get is these two-person stack groups. For these, just have your tanks and melees near to the boss, while your healers and ranged are out at the edge. The final mechanic that you're capable of getting are spread markers that target every single player. For this, have your tanks and melees near middle and your healer ranged out. My group has tanks and healers go clockwise, while DPS go counterclockwise. Be aware that as the melee, keep in mind that those AoEs are going to appear much sooner than they actually explode, so it's perfectly fine to take your spread while stood in the AoEs, as long as you move out of them quickly enough that you don't get clipped by the explosion. After the first mechanic, the boss will always give a cast conflagration, and it's a line AoE that's going to go through the middle of the arena. There's always time for you to get in front of this if you want to make things easier on yourself, but it's perfectly fine to dodge it behind as well. This will be followed by the second of the three mechanics that you're going to get. Remember, you only get two mechanics total. It just picks from those three each pull. 
Finally, after all mechanics are done, the boss casts Radial Flagration. This is a Protean Wave, or cones targeting every player, so we need to get to our clock positions. Be aware that the explosions will still be getting off, going off as the cast starts. Get to your position, and take the Protean Wave. The boss will cast another Inferno Raid Wad to heal and mitigate through, before turning east, and once again transforming the stage, ready for another set of ordeals. We're going to get two completely new versions of the ordeal mechanic this time. This first one, all of the symbols on the outside will be blue triangles, and there's two lines coming from middle. We're going to get two cones, we just need to figure out where they're coming from. The good news is, those two cones are always only going to be 90 degrees away from each other, or right next to each other. I recommend always focusing in on the two white lines in the middle, the V. If when purple rotates, there are straight lines in front of both of those white lines, then the safe spot is between the two in the middle of the V, in between the two blue cones. If instead, like we have here, you're going to get one of those zigzag patterns, instead the two blue cones will be right next to each other, and we just need to go to the side of the two of them. Once the rotation happens and the fireballs go off, as long as you're positioned to the side of the two cones, you are fine. The next ordeal of purgation follows immediately. The only thing that rotates is the purple in the middle, and you have all red symbols. These two red explosions will always leave only a single eighth of the arena, a single pizza slice, if you will, safe. If you focus on the northern line, you'll see that it's going to get a straight line, and so as a result, the northern half of the arena is going to just get cleaved. The southern line from in the middle is instead going to zigzag down to southeast. So we need to go a bit away from both north and southeast. The only slice that's away from both of those is this one here. You're locked in place as the fireballs move, and as long as you're in the safe spot, you're good. After these two ordeals finish, the boss jumps towards north, becomes untargetable, and we get our ad phase. Six ads appear, five smaller ones and one larger one. The boss also gets a Rubicante's power bar that's going to slowly build up over time. This serves as the enrage for this phase. You need to kill all the ads before the bar fills. The middle ad is by far the most dangerous, as it's going to periodically cast Ghastly Torch. This is going to give every player a uh, fire debuff that bleeds and causes damage over time and stacks. So we need to kill this ad as quickly as possible. All of the other mini ads each have their own mechanic they cast, and it happens in the same order every time. First, the northern ad makes these ground AoEs appear. These are well telegraphed, and you've got plenty of time to dodge them, so you can more or less just ignore them. Just don't stand in the bad. Next up, the two southern ads are going to tether players. These players just need to run towards the ad they're tethered to, and point these tethers out, because they're about to get cleaved by fire, and they don't want to cleave the rest of the group. Finally, the two northern corner adds are going to tether random players. These are tank buster tethers. Have a tank pick one up, and once again go away from the group, as while these don't have a big cono cleave, they do still cleave in a small area around the tank. That's it. The mechanics just then repeat from there until you either kill all the adds or it enrages. The only suggestion I have with this is to definitely kill that middle one first. But once it's dead, the order you kill the rest is up to you. My group preferred killing the southern ones, as it allows you to skip more mechanics based on our DPS, but it's just down to what mechanics you don't want to have to do. As soon as all the adds are dead, and assuming you haven't hit the Enrage, the boss immediately becomes targetable again and starts to cast Blazing Rupture. So go head towards the boss and start attacking, but shield and mitigate ready for this raid wide. About halfway through the cast bar, Blazing Rapture will cause a fiery dot to appear on all players, meaning that your players aren't going to be full health unless they get healed or shielded after this goes off. However you deal with the raid wide, after it hits, we enter the phase three of the fight. The boss will immediately transform into its new form with the wing out. As this phase starts, these are the positions I recommend you get in for the next mechanic, Flame Spire Brand. These positions are just our clock positions, but players have squished between the two way marks the same color as theirs. So for instance, main tank's supposed to be at A, R1's supposed to be at 1, they've smushed between the two red way marks. Flamespire Brand is going to give a bunch of debuffs to the party. Four players, all of the same role, are going to get this flare debuff. These players will need to go out to the edge when it goes off. You might recognize this symbol from previous fights. One player of the other role is going to get a stack debuff. 
All players of this role will go in when this goes off to soak the stack together. In this case, it's all of the DPS. Finally, three seconds after the flare and the stack go off, every player is going to get hit by a spread, so at the very end, everyone needs to be spread from each other so that they don't overlap their AoEs. Before anything else happens, the boss will cast Flame Rake, and we get this spinner that spins around and will either point to all cardinals or all intercardinals. As soon as this points, you're going to get a very short telegraph followed by the actual AoE, so immediately move away from where those arrows are pointing. You want to start to position a little bit so that DPS can go in to take their stack and tanks can, healers can go out for their flares. The original plus-shaped AoE is now going to sort of echo outwards. These are the safe spots for the second hit. As you can see, Cardinals were originally unsafe. Now, that same unsafe spot is the safe spot at the edge. So if it hits Cardinals first, the safe spot for the second hit is at the edge Cardinals. There's always going to be a safe spot in the middle, so the stack will always be taken middle after this. All the DPS are going to head in, while tanks and healers are going to go out at the edge. To make sure that tanks and healers are all at different spots, stick to your color. So if you are on a purple waymark, you go to a purple waymark out. After the second hit, you're going to see the third telegraphed AoE, and we need to get ready to spread, because our flares and our stack have gone off, and we need to not get hit by these spread AoEs. All of the people that are in middle are just going to wiggle a tiny bit out from where they currently are. All of the players on the outside are just going to take a step in to where they're not hit by the AoE. Again, it's telegraphed, so you can see where this distance is. If positioned like this, you'll be perfectly spread no matter how the mechanic resolves. Let's rewind and show this exact same mechanic again, but with all the other options that could have happened. So Flamespire Brand is cast, but this time the DPS get the flares. They're going to go out. The tank has the stack marker, so tanks and healers will be going in. The boss casts Flame Rake. And we get our spin, but this time that spin lands on intercardinals. Players are going to adjust to dodge this. And since intercardinals will hit, the next safe spot is going to be out at intercardinals or do middle. Tanks and healers are going to head middle to stack, while DPS go out, again, sticking to the same color as your waymark. Finally, don't forget to spread at the end. DPS who are on the outsides are just going to take a small step inwards to dodge the telegraphed AoE, and tanks and healers take a small step outwards. There's no need to try to go to waymarks for the spread, which can lead to confusion on the X pattern here. Instead, just move slightly out from the direction you're already in, and you will be spread. These next couple of mechanics just stay spread. We get an Inferno, but because the wing is out, instead of a raid wide, this is going to be spread AoEs that target every player and comes with a bleed. As long as you're not stood on top of each other, this isn't much different than just a raid wider with a bleed. This is followed with Scalding Signal or Scalding Ring. This is once again a spread, and I recommend having all players stood on their clock positions, but it also comes with either an in or out. Scalding Signal is an out, so the entire boss's hitbox will be unsafe for a chariot, while every player is targeted with a line AoE. The other version of this is Scalding Ring. Had you gotten Scalding Ring instead, it's the exact opposite. Be in the middle, but once again, every player gets a line AoE. After Scalding Ring, or Scalding Signal, the boss will face a direction and cast Sweeping Immolation. Sweeping Immolation is quite tricky. First, look at the boss's wing. If you see three small flowers on it, this means that we're going to have to spread at the end of this mechanic. If instead you see one large flower, the entire party will stack. Sweeping Immolation also comes with the boss doing a full 180 degree cleave in front of them, and the line AoEs that we baited before are going to come back. As a result, the only safe spots are going to be four little pizza slices behind the boss. We need to make sure that we resolve the stacks or spreads in these spaces. If it's the stack, it's quite simple. Pick one of the spots directly behind the boss and have the whole group stack together. My group prefers clockwise or left-facing middle, but it's totally up to you how you deal with this. I'm going to instead focus on discussing the much harder one, which is if you have the spreads. There's really only room in each of these pizza slices for two players, so we need to be tactical in how we assign players to each slice. You can, if you want to, just have totally fixed positions relative to the way the boss is facing, with tanks and ranged on the outside, melee's healers on the inside, or however you like to do it. Uh, I prefer a different approach that's based off the clock positions we chose at the beginning. For this one, 
as soon as you get hit by your line AoE, take a small step clockwise. From here, if you are already on the safe side, you stay, with healers and ranged on the outside and tanks and melees taking an inner spot. If you are on the unsafe spot, you go directly opposite where you are, like a perfect line directly through the middle of the boss. Because of how we pre-positioned people in our clock spots, this will always lead to tanks with healers and DPS with each other, and so there's always spot for tanks and melees to keep their uptime, and it hopefully minimizes the amount of thinking you actually have to do during this mechanic, as you just need to go, am I on the good side, or am I on the bad side? However you decide to spread and get into these positions, as long as you're in your spots before sweeping immolation finishes, the line always return, the boss cleave goes off, and you should be fine. Next up is Dual Fire, which will target the top two players in aggro. Make sure that both tanks have the top two players in aggro. These are wide cleaves. You can simply have both tanks go to northeast and northwest while the group is south, and there's a huge safe spot for everyone to hide. Afterwards, the boss is going to transform back into its original form. We immediately get the stage transition and two more brand new ordeals. The first new ordeal of purgation we get is just a single line, but it comes with both the red and the purple circles in the middle spinning. You just need to figure out where this line is going to end. I solve this by starting in middle, focusing on the red line rotating first. It's going to go towards south, and then looking at where the purple line is going to meet it. By following where those lines go, you should be able to work out that this blue cone is what's going to get hit, and so the group needs to stand to the side of it. It's possible that a red one could have been targeted instead. If you got a red square, then make sure you go opposite it. The final new ordeal of purgation once again has alternating red and blue, and there's just a rotation from purple. The two lines from middle are always going to target a red and a blue, and those two are going to always be next to each other. The safe spot will be to find the blue and go to the side of it, but away from the red. In this case, these are the two that will be hit after the purple rotation, so the group's going to go away from that red to the side of the blue. This is the safe spot for this mechanic. When you've dealt with all, both ordeals of purgation, there's a standard Inferno raid wide because the boss is not transformed. This is just a normal raid wide, and the boss will once again transform for our final new mechanic. I recommend pre-spreading just enough that you can see clearly your number, as when the boss casts Flame Spire Claw, yeah, it's limit cut. Every player is numbered 1 through 8. You're going to get cleaved in the order of your number. You can't get hit by two cleaves. The way that my group so solves this is to have all odd numbers go left, all even numbers go right. Odd numbers are going to take their cleave at northwest. Even numbers are going to take their cleave at northeast. Everybody else needs to make sure that they hide down at southeast and southwest because these cleaves are fairly wide, significantly wider than if you've sent down Diamond Weapon or P6S. Finally, the numbers 7 and 8 are going to be on their side, but they're going to be nearer to middle. That's because as the cast finishes, just as one's about to get cleaved, two players get tethers. These add an extra wrinkle to the limit cut. Essentially, you cannot take a cleave while you have a tether. That's bad. Additionally, if you hold on to your tether for too long, you're slowly building up a stacking debuff, and if you get five stacks, the party wipes. Here's how my group so solves this mechanic. By having seven and eight near middle, they immediately grab the tethers. From this point onwards, after you get cleaved, you take the tether, and the next person on your side goes into position. So, one gets cleaved, they grab the tether on their side, and three goes into position. Two gets cleaved, they grab the tether on their side, and four gets into position. Three gets cleaved, they grab the tether on their side, while 5 goes into position, 4 gets cleaved, they grab the tether on their side, and 6 gets into position, and so on. At the very end, when 7 gets cleaved, it's up to them if they want to grab the tether. It's not necessary, because after 8 gets cleaved, the tethers immediately disappear. And the mechanic is solved. That's it. That's Flame Spire Claw. Everything from this point onwards is entirely repeated mechanics, and it follows the exact same pattern the last time the boss was transformed. First, be spread for an Inferno raid-wide because it's transformed. It's the spread AoEs with the bleed. And then you get Scalding Signal or Ring, the opposite of the one that you got previously. Make sure to bait those line AoEs on Cardinals and Intercardinals, as the boss will face a random direction and cast Sweeping Immolation. 
Once again, look at the star, because it's a big star this time, the group will stack behind the boss. Those line AoEs come back where we baited them previously, and as long as we're all together, the mechanic is solved. You get another dual fire that targets both of top two players in aggro. Really important your tanks don't die to the previous one, otherwise your top T DPS is going to get a surprise. The boss will transform back into its normal version, and now it immediately faces east and we get two ordeals of purgation. These are no different than what we've had previously. These are all going to be copy-pasted from previous ordeals that you've seen, but it's random which ones you'll get, so you just need to identify the ordeal that you have and solve it the same way you did previously. After both ordeals, you get a couple of auto attacks, and then the boss is going to start to cast Inferno. This serves as the Enrage. It's not a very long cast, so hopefully you manage to kill the boss in time. Otherwise, it's a wipe. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found this guide useful.